Hey guys, this is Woody, the Unexceptional Gamer, and this commentary actually is about the gameplay. So uh, I've had a couple of requests for guys who wanted to see me play by myself, you know, without a, a stack team, and um, so I thought I'd post this one up. This is not my best game. Uh, a lot of times when I get you know the really, really good games on my own, I, uh, I the other team is, is pretty bad, and I, I don't like uploading those. You know, if I get like a 10 to 1 and the other team is all that terrible, um, you know, of course I've uploaded them before, but I, I like these two. I, I like, um, you know, a, a little more balanced game to work in there. So at the start of this thing, I'm going for Bravo in every which way I can. And it brings me to probably about a third of my desk right, right at the start of the game here. Because uh, taking Bravo on firing range is dangerous business. Now, um, since I played this game, this game is, I think, a tiny bit old. I, uh, I found a better place to capture Bravo. And in, it, where it is is... When you capture Bravo on this map, people are expecting you to be on the left, just on the other side of this wooden wall. I think what I do here is I just sit and wait for some teammate support for a little bit because I didn't think I'd stay alive on my own long enough to actually capture the flag. But the, the sandbags I'm looking at on the right, the capture radius of the flag includes that. So you can you know, just snuggle right up against the, the sandbags that I'm just looking over right now to, to my right and, um, and capture from there. And that does two things. One, it's a slightly different place for people to look. And two, all those nades that guys throw over the buildings, throw across the map, um, they usually land them right at the base of the wall on that building. And you get a much better chance of surviving all those nade attacks, especially with Flag Jacket, if you're not sitting there right uh, up against that white building. You know, the, we, it's called tin, and the callouts for that are top tin and bottom tin. Anyway, I laid that napalm and uh, got on the mic and told my team to capture B. Even though I don't know these guys, uh, I'm still on the mic all the time. Uh, I, you know, uh, by and large, I get a really positive reception uh, when I communicate with randoms. Every now and then, some guy you know totally doesn't like it at all. You know, I tried to hide from enemy napalm. It didn't work. But uh, I told him, you know, hey guys, capture B. I think I got a, at least a triple. I, I might have had a fourth kill trickle in with that napalm. But uh, it wasn't enough because it looks like we weren't able to capture B. So um, here, the, my teammate jumps on B, and I'm under the impression that it's totally foolish. <laughs> that, uh, you know, we don't have any kind of map control. They're sitting all over the place. But um, it, it, after a little bit, I'm like, oh, shucks, you know, I guess I better support this guy and help him out. And in, in, in the end, I think what it turns into is I just kind of like fortuitously, you know, got credit for a flag cap when he earned the first 90% of it. But in my heart, my intentions were purer than that. I, I thought, you know, I'm going to help this guy out and uh, and let him finish off the flag cap. So, um, <laughs> so now it looks like one of my teammates has a, a chopper gunner up, which is pretty helpful. All right, I want to talk about placing a claymore at the top, in, in top 10 right there. I still haven't figured out the ideal... Uh, claymore placement for it and I'd be interested in, in what you guys have figured out it, it seems like if I put it say right at the uh, at the little landing halfway up the stairs then uh, uh, oh and this works out kind of funny I think I die here but I do cap the flag and uh, yeah so it's, I don't know if that's good or not you know I don't know how many kills in I was but um, uh, and I think I, I pay him back in a moment here sorry to ruin the uh, the suspense but uh, payback's a bitch baby anyway uh, for top 10 on that claymore placement, claymore placement, I still haven't found the perfect spot. If I move it further away from the steps, like I would on a lot of spots, and first, <laughs> I didn't see that guy there, so I had to finish him and then his claymore. If I place it further back, like I do in a lot of spots, then he has the opportunity to walk up there and shoot me. So I really want him to die before I even, uh, you know, be before he can get eyes on me uh, with that claymore. Uh, but on the other hand, it seems like if I move it closer to the steps, they're either walking through it or they're spotting it in advance. And I guess everybody knows to look for a claymore in that area. But um, yeah, if you guys have figured out your favorite place to put a claymore, then, then please share it with, with us. And uh, you know, my subscriber base will be better at Call of Duty than uh, the people who aren't subscribed to me, which would be the goal. You know, <laughs> We should be out there winning games all the time. So... Um, uh, for a lot of this game, what I kind of do is post up in tin and uh, defend flags. I, I think that uh, it, when you look at the stats at the end of the game, I have a, a whole lot of defense. And it, it lines up with the kind of game that I like to play. I like to own two flags, know where their spawn is coming from, and then just win, win, win. So, so that's my goal. Uh, nothing I really do in my game is something that everybody couldn't pull off. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really a master at the stick. And again, I... 
that claymore. I'm, I just don't have confidence in it. Um, not really master on the stick, but yeah, I, I think I play pretty smart, and that helps me win games. So uh, the, you know, that that's what I'm trying to share with you guys. So what I do here for a little bit is post up on top ten and watch the Bravo flag. Uh, it's a pretty good spot to watch them coming from wood, which is the call out over there, top wood and bottom wood. And then there's, you know, the wood sandbags, which is, you know, a little more specific on, on top wood. Um, so uh, uh, this is a pretty good spot to counter wood over there, and it's a pretty good spot to counter crow's nest, which is that, like, three-story high thing right in the center. But it's not the best spot to defend B. You know, it, once they get to B, then what you need to do to, to kill them off B leaves you pretty vulnerable. And... You know, that's not my favorite. I almost like to post up on ramp, which is where my character was looking just a moment ago as they go from firing rage to ramp and uh, and, and watch B from there. So there is a spot. I, I think what happened right there is I, I shifted targets from my first guy to the second one too early. But there are a couple times I die in this game in these two-on-one situations. There's another one right there where it was a two-on-one situation. And, uh, man, two-on-ones in all the previous Call of Duties... I had a much easier time winning than I do in Black Ops. In, in Black Ops is, it's not Halo-like, you know, in, in Halo a two-on-one is really, really a tight situation. In here you can still pull off the doubles, but, um, uh, you know, <laughs> two-on-ones would leave me salivating at the opportunity in previous Call of Duties, and in this one, if I win, if I get a double spray, it's kind of a you know, fortunate change of pace, because it's hard to beat two people at one time in this game compared to previous Call of Duties. So, um, uh, this might look a little campy to you guys, but I, I'm doing what needs to be done. Oh, I had this notion there was a guy uh, coming up there, so I just pre-fired around, and sure enough, there was a guy coming. So that, that sticky nade took care of him. Now, I wonder how you guys feel about the nades. So, I've been running sticky nades because... Um, I've been, I got used to them in Call of Duty, and I can see we're losing Charlie, but I can't spot this guy at all. By the time I do spot him, I'm almost out of bullets, and yeah, it runs kind of rough. Um, I got used to sticky nades in Modern Warfare 2, but the blast radius for the frag nades is larger, and um, uh, also you can cook them and drop them right on a guy. So I'm, I'm trying to find that balance. Sticky nades are nice in that you can throw them quicker. You know, they, they blow up quicker. But when I first used frags in this game, guys were evading them because I wasn't cooking them long enough. But you think, oh, we'll just cook them long enough. Well, you know, that means you also have to... They're only useful in situations where you have a lot of time to do that cooking. And that's a problem in itself. So my team is capping C. I drop a, a napalm on them to, to keep them safe. And I expected them to cap C right there, but... It looks like they all ran middle, uh, under 10, I don't know. But uh, I'd be interested in your feedback on the nades. I was thinking of running flat frags a bit more often and uh, doing what it takes. See here, I put myself in danger to, to hold that B flag. But if you lose B on firing range, man, you know, it, it can take five deaths before you get it back. Sometimes it's a nightmare, so it, it's usually a worthwhile thing to, to take a risk and hold B. So anyway, I'm going to try some frag uh, in upcoming games. And uh, like I said in the beginning, this isn't really the most stellar game, but uh, I liked it because the teams were a little more balanced, and I felt like you know, I was a big part of the win, whereas uh, in, in some other games, it's like these guys would have won uh, without me. So so that's that. So here, uh, I held 10 long enough and finally got this chopper gunner. I speed up the chopper gunner footage because that's become kind of a YouTube standard. You can see they immediately start shooting it down, and uh, it doesn't last very long. So <laughs> Look at that. It's over already and sped up. But I actually did get a lot of kills in there. And let me know if you guys want the chopper gunner footage sped up like that or not. A lot of guys, oh my god, it's so boring, but, but what, whatever. So um, so that's it really. And in the rest of this game, I just sort of post up in top 10 and draw this, you know, thou shall not pass line and don't let them come from A to B. And I know that if we do that, then uh, this game will be a win. I think the only thing that gets me out is right here. I get a kill and run out of bullets in my primary. So um, you know, when you do that, it's time to go. Another thing, I had been running extended mags because uh, it helps me with those double and triple sprays. But I think x -Jaws might be right. x -Jaws maintains that just having the extra ammo that comes with dual mags is worth it all by itself. He runs sleight of hand and dual mags, even though uh, one traditional line of thought is that with, sleight of, with dual mags you don't need sleight of hand. It almost gives you that perk already. But he says, no, 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 sleight of hand's really handy uh, for other stuff. But um, 
I think it gives you a quicker aim down sight, Sleight of Hand Pro, and he runs Sleight of Hand for that reason, and Dual Mags just for the extra ammo, and, and you know, that's the way he does his setup. So uh, I've been giving that a try more, and he's right. You know, it really is hard as you get towards your higher kill streaks to keep things going. I think it was Onslaught who told me that uh, when I tested out Aim Assist, I actually did it wrong, that uh, Aim Assist actually stops working when you're about to get your chopper gunner or your dogs. <laughs> and uh, he's right, man. Things get sort of tense there when you know you're right about to get a good kill streak. So um, it's nice to have the extra ammo in your weapon so you can just keep going and, and not have those problems. 46 and 10, 10 defends. I thought that was a big part of why we won, and I hope you enjoyed the gameplay.